got our poles up. This is all going to be T posts. The town came out and cut out a lot of the grass. My husband is using a rake, a wee whacker, a shovel, and a mallet. That's all we have out here. Can't find no one that's going to do the job they're willing to say they're going to do and not do it at all. So we do have the bamboo up. It's all taking ground. Meaning the stalks haven't died on us. The leaves are going to turn brown because winter's coming. And they know the change. All this you see worked back. My husband did with the wee whacker. The town did this part here. He's out here right now. Working with the Malix. Soon, I would like to have all that with bamboo. I would like to have it. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it. Where do these dogs go? All right, I see them. They take off a lot, so better watch out. You dumb cracker, you can't move the fuck over a little bit? Shit. I'm gonna try to hit my fucking ass. If I didn't move two or more inches over, he would have hit me. Dumb people. Old ass people. <sighs> so. Found an old school cougar. Ram, ram thingy there. Somebody was having shooting practice here. Look like AK-47 shots. I don't know what they were doing. I don't think I was around. I could have been around. I don't know, but basically, all from where the green patch is, all the way down to where he's at, he's done by hand. That one, we don't have any way, any way to get machinery out here. We don't have no way to pick it up. We don't have no way to get into here. The closest place that has machinery is Augusta, Georgia. And that's about an hour and ten minutes away from my house. They will charge me $100 delivery here, $100 back, plus the $100 for the gas. We're already at three, plus what is for the whole day. We're already at $800, and we haven't even started yet. But slowly by slowly, it will come through. The hurricane ripped down that tree, this tree, those trees, all down there. They're going to get cut down and be replaced with bamboo. Bamboo would be the only type of wood on my property. This land across the street from me is for sale. This used to be a 30-acre lot, but the guy defaulted on his lot, and he came back in here, had a reland surveyed, and he's selling it for whatever he's selling it for. And then that little area right there is a wetland. Um, when Georgia Power was coming to run the easement for the poles and stuff, they had to do the land survey because they really wanted to take it off of those back poles back there. And running across the people's property. But that's all wetlands back there. So when the engineer came out to do it. He landed up falling in some wet sand back there. So. This was a pain in my behind. Never in my life I want to go do an easement ever again. The, the power company wasn't the problem. It was more the town that gave us issues. The town really didn't want us to have any electricity out here. Why? Because we don't have running water and we don't have septic. And to get electricity, you have to have one or the other. If you're going to have a house or an RV, in our case we had an RV, but this turned into a business lot. And that's my residential lot over there because I have two lots for the price of one. 
And uh, I know the landowner, he's kind of kicking himself in his behind because he could have equally split these eight acres up to two acres a piece, you know, two, four, six, eight. He could have got four people on these lots, four landowners instead of one or two, me and my husband, co-owners. But we always have our no trespassing posted because people do come out here onto your land. Um, like I said, I own all the way down to the end of this road. So I got eight acres of land out here. I got four over here and four over here. And over here is going to be basically two acres of bamboo homesteading our shed for where we want to sell our products out from and then over there is our homesteady project we're going to be doing eventually next next summer we're going to do it I'm not doing anything this summer this summer and this winter only because I've been so sick and finally just getting motivated but I would like to definitely Maybe go up to the auction house um, in a couple of weeks and get a set of four goats. And if I could find sheep, I'll take them too. Because I have a lot of weeds in here. Sticky bushes, weeds. There is um, wood. So the goats will eat all that. It doesn't really matter what kind of goats I get because I'm not butchering them. They're my pets and they will eat to the end until they can't eat no more. I don't believe in killing my animals. Even if I had some chickens out here, I wouldn't kill them. There would be more about fertilization of my land. And, uh, it's just been really, really hot today. And 100, 100 degrees. And the index temperature is feeling like 115. And it's so hard through the daytime for us to do anything out here. We have to either come out here early morning about 4 or 5 o'clock, work about 3 4 hours, be in the house all day long, and to about this time, about 5.30, 6 o'clock, once the sun has made it over this tree line over there, we come out because it's just too brutal out here. <coughs> and like I said, I have all this land up here, all, all to this tree line. All the way past, and like, you see those trees right there? That's where I am. So I have a little couple little projects um, that will be coming up in the winter time. We have a lot of Georgia red clay, and I got some quick set, and um, we're going to be making us a nice little driveway, especially going into here where my car is and the RV is because it's been so dry that all that dust is getting all over my car and it's really becoming very irritated. I don't like driving around in a dirty car. And my beautiful banana tree that's been growing in a bucket for at least three years. Um, the mama plant that I got this from, this is actually a pup plant. The mama plant that I got it from, she was creating bananas, little ch Chiquita bananas like this big. And now she's been living in a bucket for almost three years. And we finally got this land and we stuck her in the ground. And her stalk was looking a little bit like this plant here. Small, small, tiny. And now look at her. She's humongous. She gets strong each and every day. And I use I use natural fertilization with them. Um, I use uh, coffee grinds. After you drink your coffee, you put store it in a coffee co container. And I put eggshells and banana peels, and I grind them all together, and I make like a compost mix. And I just sprinkle it around it. And they love it. My pineapples, which I'm gonna have to um, get some hay and put it out here. And if it gets really, really cold this winter, I'm not sure how cold it's going to get. But if it does, I have a big a big type of um, laundry bag that I put over this. It's a construction bag. I mean, a pup, a banana tree pup like this, I would sell it for $80. Something like this, 
I would sell for $110. And the ones over by my house, I would sell those for $60 a piece. I have a small one. She's probably 25 Only because I know they pr produce food. This is a banana tree that produces food. Um, this is a grape tree. Hasn't produced anything because I haven't gotten it into the ground. But I have faith next year she will produce some kind of stuff. This is my cactus plants we got from Arizona. Beautiful cactus. These are the type of cactus that don't have any bumps on them. So you're not going to get stuck by it. You can rub your hand all on it and stuff. And at the bottom, you can eat this cactus. If you're ever in the, in the Arizona desert and you're lost and you see cactus that you can rub your hands on, you can eat that type of cactus. And, of course, my basil tree is taking a hurting out here. And like I said, we plant the stuff out here, but it's just been so brutal. It really has. It's, I don't even know if they, <laughs> what they're going to do. This cabbage... Collie, um, what is it? Cabbage, turnips, sweet potatoes, lettuce, kale, and um, asparagus at the end. I don't think they're gonna do anything for me. And this is the oregano. It's still, it's still really growing. Look at the bees. Ooh, did I come across one? Look at that bumblebee. Look at that and grab for him because he would have stung me. I don't know if he's sleeping. Are they sleeping in there? No. There's another one. I don't know what they're doing. And these are some cages that I found at the garbage dumps. I guess to transport chickens. And a lot of birds were getting caught up on it. So I turned them upside down because I was tired of rescuing the cat bird. And then some stuff landed in these containers. I found these also. I try to recycle, get recycled containers. People might be throwing stuff out. Ask them because 95% of the time they'll say, yeah, take whatever you want and I'll take whatever I want. And I found these tomato cages down at the dumps also. So they're good for when I'm growing more and stuff, you know, like my cucumbers and stuff. And this is a composting thing. This was the old corn. And then we have the ochre, which is, happily to say, still producing. They don't need any water. These suckers haven't had any water. I thought by not watering would kill them off. But they're still growing. Look at the size of the stock on that. These are heirloom ochres. And, this, and they're still growing. There's a lot of stink bugs on them, too. But look at the size of this. I'm just going to leave it until it dies at all. Because nobody, nobody seems to, like, I don't want to grow. My problem is I don't want to grow fruits and vegetables for people. They want to eat it, but then they don't eat it when it's time to be picked and harvested. And it's just a waste of time and energy and money for me. I don't like throwing food out. So stuff like that I would take down to my friend's pig. And she'll eat it. The oink oink loves it. And then just basically it. I don't have any water. So I'm trying to put, um, plan and get a water well out here. Um, hopefully by next summer, this time next, next year, we'll have a water well out here. And it just takes time. Time and energy. Time, energy, and money. And money we don't have. I paid for a homestead. I paid for that the easement, three thousand dollars just for the electricity, the the pole with the transformer, the wire, the anchor pole, the light, this wire to my pole for my meter, the box, the whole setup to the shed, the shed because I can't without the shed I wouldn't have been able to go forward and get no electricity out here after dropping three thousand dollars to the electricity company. For the easement, I'm literally out of 10 grand. So, and then I got sick. So it's, it's kind of hard. You know, I do have a lot of people buying bamboo from us, but it gets very hard when I got sick. And the way I wanted to work my ground, 
I would want to work it a little, a lot better than what I have done so far. So, the quick set concrete action is going to be like right here. We're going to start it, you know, start it right here with this, this area is right here. Going up this driveway because this dirt is so fine. This dirt is so fine that it doesn't matter how fast or how slow you go into this driveway. It puts a lot of dust on my gray vehicle. And I do not like driving her when she looks dirty. The truck is white. You barely even see the dirt on it. And 95% of the time we park it down at the end of the driveway. Because it's just easier when we have to do stuff for the business aspect of our property. But all these weeds, the hummingbirds love them. I'm not sure what kind of weeds they are. I like them. They give my property a pretty little color, some kind of coloring on it. And then they have these kind of weeds. And they're pretty too. They're very pretty. And this, with the yellow together, it really brings out the colors, you know. But you can see this ground. We got a little bit of water yesterday. A little bit of rain. But it wasn't enough to do anything with. But you can see what it does to my car. It makes it really, really dirty. And when it makes it really, really dirty, I don't like it. Because this gravel this is so fine. And I mean, that's horrendous. I really don't like when it, when it looks like that. So, it is what it is. Can't really do much about it. And then I have this section, which is our secondary plot, which is our residential lot. We are not having any electricity on this lot. This lot is strictly homesteading. I'm not having the town. What the town doesn't know what's going on. The less it is. Unless I'm going to put a house out here, then obviously I need to get a builder's permit. If I'm going to put a septic system out here, obviously I know I have to go do the health department. But we're not doing any of that. We have a temporary tank for our sewage that could go into the ground because I got approval from the EPA. And um, it, which would be that tank right there. And then, I don't know, like I said, I want to get some animals and put them out there and worked certain areas of our land where I can move them around and stuff and probably like down at the end I'm going to have like a little wildlife area because that's the, the lowest part of our property and it kind of does get wet back there and um I don't know we might even try to get into the hemp business too because bamboo takes a long time for it to mature for it to sell for it to be harvested and um, in four years, I'll see some money from that big Japanese timber. And the Asper will be 18 months that I will see um, some kind of money. But in the meantime, between the 18 months and the Japanese timber, four years, I'll have the CBD hemp out here. Um, I'm hopefully and praying to God that Georgia would allow some of us people to grow CBD hemp for either our personal usage or community usage. And or for a statewide usage. And that would help a lot of people also. But other than that, I mean, the temperature is now probably about 75 degrees. It took a major cool off right now. The birds are going to get ready to go to sleep. And the sun is starting to set. And like I said, I like to get this project going out there with that quick set and the molds. I've, I've seen some molds on Amazon where you can mix your quick set, your quick set together and um, pour your molds out there and make your own concrete bricks or whatever. And that's what I'm going to do. I think that would be the cheapest way for us to go through. Um, have maybe 120 quick set bags, 120 pounds of concrete out here. And do it ourselves because I can't rely on anyone to come through and help us. They say they're going to come through and then they don't show up. I don't have time for that. I don't have time for no show uppers. I dealt with that in the city. And I figure people in the country will be a little bit more understanding. That people are trying to get stuff done. 
and we can't because we're only two people with no machines out here. And um, it is what it is. I mean, but we're doing a damn good job with no machinery. This has all been done by hand. And like I said, those are the pups out there. Those banana, the big banana trees that I showed you out in the field, those are them all out there. I have about 10 of them out there. And eventually they'll grow bigger. And I, like I said, they get the hay and put it out there underneath the rooting system for winter time and cover them with a bag. <coughs> Excuse me. Cover them with a bag when if it gets really, really cold. And if it gets extremely cold, I mean, extremely cold, the worst comes to worst, I just dig them up, put them back in the bucket, and bring them inside my RV underneath the heat lamp like they've been doing for the last four years before I found property. I always dreamed to have property, and I finally, my dream has finally come through, but it's kind of hard when you don't have no one helping you. And it's, it's really sad that nobody... People that have the machines refuse to come through or do what they say they're going to do. And that kind of irritates me and it irritates him because I'm looking for someone to help him out. Because I physically cannot get out there and help him out anymore. Um, my kidney stones has created me to have kidney disease. I have acute kidney failure going on. I have stones still enlarged in my kidneys. I still have numerous amounts of procedures left along with the TMJ, so now I'm having issues eating and opening my mouth correctly to chew down and eat anything, so everything has to be a liquid meal, and it becomes disgusting after a while, and um, my health is not the best, and I wish, I wish literally I could have got this property back in the year 2015. I In the year 2015, I could have just wrote out checks, hey, you need a well, $5,000, there you go. Oh, I need, I need $3,000 for the water, the electricity. There you go. Oh, I need $3,000 for the shed. Here it is. I need, I need, I need, I need. I had the money to do it. But now I don't have the money anymore. I don't have it anymore. The way I was working, I was working like a dog, and now I don't have it. And everybody I helped out in life, I don't see no handouts for me. But look at this sunset. These are heaven's rays. I know God feels my pain. He gave me this property, and I'm going to continue working it like I know. I know Rome wasn't built in a day, and I'm going to continue doing what I can. Well, I hope everyone has a good night. Thank you for watching from Green Steel USA LLC out of Burke County, Georgia.